Hi guys, my name is Muggsy and I am starting a 48 piece large size puzzle and going to create on these puzzle pieces different types of techniques and mediums that I am uncomfortable with just so I can get a little more practice and be introduced to some new techniques. This is my first one. I'll show you what I made here. Sorry about the glare. This is just a random puzzle piece that I picked out and did a antique vintage I was totally inspired to do this by Crystal from Crystal with Arted Out. She was one of the first people I saw who did a whole altered puzzle like this. Also, Wendy Mason and Eileen McKins. Check them out on YouTube. I will leave their links below. They are an awesome bunch of artists that you definitely need to watch. And make sure you guys, if you like this video and like videos like these, hit that subscribe button, follow, hit the little bell so you get notifications because I'm putting out videos multiple times a week right now. And come join us because doing art is super fun. All right, guys, enjoy. What we're gonna do is basically take each piece, you know, each time I do a video, I will gesso the piece and then do some kind of, uh, you know, piece of art with it. That way when we're done, we'll hang it up on the wall and it should be pretty cool. Or I'll attach it to a canvas. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. First off, what I need to do is I need to make a stencil, make sure I know what size I need. and. I'm just on a piece of paper. I think there's some poster board behind here, so I'm just gonna easily chase this guy here. And then I have that piece to uh, uh, do later. So with these pieces, what I want to do is label them. It's important to label them because these are, uh, I want to, when I put the whole thing up, I want pieces to be actually right side up and not upside down and whatnot. The first thing I'm going to do is find a marker. All right. And so that way I know that these are all facing upwards. And then we're going to label these by number. There we go. <clears throat> so, 48 pieces. Oh, now that these are labeled, I'm not going to pick them like in order. I want to make this collage quite random, so whatever I do each day doesn't really match up to the day before. So, you know, when I start, I'll just pick a random tile, like, you know, 24, gesso it. I'll probably be doing the back here. <clears throat> gesso it and then, uh, you know, do do some art on it. So I'll start working on these today. I think I'll start with 24 and then I will take all these videos uh, and put them on my YouTube channel why I do them and then put them all into one folder so that way when I'm done with this project you can um, binge watch all of these and get them done real quick. So. All right so here we go we're gonna go ahead and start with this one so I'm gonna change some cameras and see you back here in a second. Hi guys got my coffee a little bit of egg champa start up here So we're starting with our puzzle pieces. I picked number 24 out of 48, I think we have. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and gesso the back of this. 
We've got an up arrow letting us know that's the top. Gessoing gives it a nice surface to work on and also it takes the paint really well. I think everything looks really nice after it's been gessoed. You don't have to gesso, but I would suggest to do it if your project has a kind of shine to it. That means it's been laminated or uh, some kind of film put over top of it. And it's gonna be harder for your paint to uh, adhere. So gesso is just always a good choice. You really only need to get the side edges. There we go. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do on this first puzzle piece. All right, this is mostly dry. Maybe a little tacky still. I've got some tissue paper here I made in an earlier video. If you'd like to check that out, I will link it below. It's just tissue paper with stamp and paint. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the entirety of this puzzle piece with a piece of this. And I think if I use this side over here, then I don't have to use that much of my tissue paper. So, but I'm thinking we're just gonna rip it up and just use some pieces. You wanna tear these up because you want these edges to be kind of feathery like that. So that way they just lay down and collage nicely. You want to do that with paper mache anytime that you're collaging. It just helps things look a little bit nicer. We're going to lay these down with some Liquitex matte gel medium. You can use Mod Podge or just regular glue if that's all you've got. That works just fine. With tissue paper, you really don't want to do both sides of the tissue paper with your paste and then lay it down just because it's so fragile. It'll tear, not that tearing matters, but it'll tear and just be a pain. Get your fingers sticky. No need for all of that right now. Oh, hi, Miss Puppy. My little cinder girl. She's my little Black Lab and Sharpe mix pup. Her and her brother. Looks like they're playing hide and seek right now. One likes to hide under the bed while the other one looks for the other one. So. I like making my own tissue paper like this because I'll probably do a few of the puzzle pieces with the tissue paper I've made in previous videos. So that'll be one element that will kind of bring the whole puzzle uh, collage together in the end. You're gonna wanna make sure it dries and then we'll just trim up all the edges here. Once this dries, we will do something. I have no idea what we're uh, planning here. So we will see. Okay, so this is mostly dry. I'm gonna add some more elements on this and then we're gonna gesso over top of everything. So I've got some numbers. I think these were a little too large to use. So I'm gonna use these little smaller ones. Just picked a number. Why not 42? It's the answer to everything. Have you read that book? Anyone? Such a good book. Douglas Adams writes amazing and he writes right up my alley, my type of things that I like so much. So I'm gonna add a few more things to this. Get things glued down. I think we're gonna be doing some more flowers. These are some flowers I used my die cut on and uh, add a burlap, white burlap. Do a couple layers of these, just so we've got a little bit of flower action going on here. I think we're gonna put a button right about there. These little flowers are gonna go on here once we're done. Got our buttons. I think that'll work. First one, not bad. I've got some of these little fake beads, pearl beads here. 
See if we can't find the end. I'm sure I picked the wrong side. There we go. We're not going to need a whole lot of that. Just got to trim off of this. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to glue this down. I'm going to cut it into a couple little pieces here. That way I have some options. And then I'm going to use this cup again. Alright, so we're going to want to put some of these little beads on. Cup. Let's see. Good. Paintbrush. Again. The matte gel. Oops. Put that in here. Nice and covered. And I'm just going to kind of lay it up under here. Added a couple more petals to that. Make it look like it's going somewhere, right? All right, I'm going to let this air dry for an hour, and then I will be back. All right, we're going to build up a little bit more on this. There's bits and pieces of little things I find. Oh, look at the googly eye. Little spider, that's cool. This is a face off of a little doll that broke. It's kind of cool looking. I'll hold on to that. Candy canes, pumpkins, rose. Yeah. Woo! Ladybugs going everywhere. Yeah. What I'm looking for is some of these little flowers here. Look at this dragon. Ooh. There's a witch's hat. Good thing I looked in here. I didn't know I had some Halloween things in here. to be all the flowers. <laughs> Corn. Cute. Let's go face. Alright, so it looks like I just had another flower, so that's good. I don't need a whole lot for this project. A little plastic wing ring for little kids, I guess. Bubble wand. Not sure. Some gears. Flowers we'll probably tuck in. So we got flowers going up around. I like this little face. I don't think it's for this project, but I forgot I had that. Now I just want to go bust open a whole bunch of little baby doll faces. So I have these awesome little ceramic faces. That's awful. <laughs> but they're cool. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab a different brush here. I'm gonna add some more gel medium here, down here, pop this guy down in here. Same with this one, pop this guy right here. I do like these wings. Not sure what I'm gonna do with those. This I've had for a really long time. I'm thinking about I think something like that would look good. So you cut it here, cut it here. Yeah, I like it right there. So we're gonna dab this and do the back of this. Even though I went over the edge, if you look from the back, it's not going to interfere with puzzle pieces. Really get that stuck down real well right here. Well, first off, we're going to cut off the ring part of these. Let's see. Again, gel. Do it well in the back. Do a big glurp right here. 
use the digging noise. That's cinder. She likes to dig. Not like holes or anything or in the dirt. She just likes to dig on her bed. It's her thing. All right, so that looks like a whole bunch of chaos, which that's kind of what you want to do with these type of uh, projects. I've got this awesome uh, piece of screen door that is actually from our old screen door that the puppies destroyed when they were little, because God forbid that there was mesh in between them and I. <laughs> Think about putting a little bit up and under here. Maybe some right up in here so it sticks out. I think that would look good. So that the puppies are back to play and hide and seek. She just goes under the bed and squeaks. Just whines until someone goes and finds her. And then she gets all silly. It's really cute. I've got these sunshines just like confetti that I'm going to use not necessarily for the sunshine element of them but more that they look like flowers so. here's the tile and now we're going to let it dry again and then gesso ever over everything this little gear in here because why not I do a little bit more of these styrofoam balls right here the little tiny ones I like how they look how they're tying everything together all right Another full dry al gesso, and then we'll do some painting, add some color. We will conquer all the oceans you can name. No, we won't take anything. So I'm sorry. From that snipping in, but don't worry, we'll find our way in. We'll find our way in. here in about an hour rust brown paste I start with this get it down in the around the 42 right now now I know I'm gonna be hitting this with water here in a little bit so I'm putting it in areas I know are gonna look good like the darker re more recessed areas kind of around the areas that I did these wings or whatever this little ring was Gonna I'll make that pretty rusty looking. I want to basically make this look like this was all made out of metal and it was left outside. I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit so that the paint runs and hit it with some water. With Move it around a little bit more. And it seems like you're wasting here, but if you want to get this effect, it just takes some time and layers. And that's drying fairly quickly because I've got it right here in front of the fan. We're going to go into another stage of rust, which this is the, it just says rust paste, rust effects paste, it does not say a color, but it's kind of like a golden yellow. Oh, not in front of the fan. Do this on the top here everywhere. Again, hit 
for some water. I'm starting to get a little bit of a rusty look. I'm gonna let this dry out again and uh, we'll add another layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these pieces here. This is just some of the uh, fabric from the flowers. Good amount of it right here. This is the gel medium again. nice awesome patina it's really gonna pop out these colors you know, want it like it dripped over the years and then this mint green Hit the water again. Last time, I'll brighten up the blue here a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put some more gesso on this. And it's finally dried all the way through. We're going to pop out some of the color. Not too big. I'm going to do a smaller brush here. All right, and we're just going to go over the top of some things to make things pop out a little bit more. The thinner this is, the more it's going to be a little more see through which is ultimately what you want, is to lighten up this area. This is just pulling some of the texture from the background so you can see it. Starting to see the 42 again, which is nice. I'll put more layers on that so that pops up more than the other things. This is kind of hidden back there. All the oceans you can name No, we won't take anything So I'm sorry for not slipping in But don't worry, we'll find our way in We'll find our way in little leftover flowers that I want to still add to this. For these I'm just going to use my tacky glue here. Put a 
little glue down in the area. And push that down. Do another one right here. Now you don't need to fill any spaces. I just thought this might look kind of cool. Almost like a barnacle effect. You can only barely see the background tissue paper anyways from the beginning. So now we're just about done with the color. I'm gonna add the little stars here again. You can see some of them underneath where they were, like right there. This one right there. It's hard to see them in this light. I take a little black paint, just some old acrylic black paint. Just kind of try to outline these. This might be too big of a brush. We'll see. Just put a little bit of black back here on the sides. Just so our numbers pop a little bit more. Now we're going to paint around the border here. You don't want to do it too thick. You're going to want your puzzle pieces to fit together again, or at least close as possible. Like I said, I think I'm going to be mounting these on a canvas or some plywood or something. So kind of makes the whole piece pop there. All right, I'm going to dry this, add some highlights and we'll be done. Still drying, but it's good right now. I've got these Inca Golds and Old Silver and Yellow Gold. Just gonna use my fingers since they're filthy apparently. I'm just gonna go over some of these edges so they pop out a little bit more. Let's add a word, because we never add words. This is much prettier than I usually do anything, so... But, well, I think it's good to learn these techniques. Do things that not necessarily are something you do every day. I think what I'm going to do now that I've thought about it while doing this first puzzle piece, is I think I'm going to do things that I'm uncomfortable with. Like, this is very, you know, ornate and pretty. You know, if you like that vintage look. It's not something I do a whole lot of, but it was really fun. I'm going to take a little bit of this Inca gold and the yellow gold. And what I want is just Jeez. enough to put this gold on these stars. It's not much, but I can also do a little bit around the area. And then I'll kind of pop. Let's do a word that I finally found and apparently lost again. A word book. So we could either, because I, I mean, I don't know what word I put in here. I could either just open to a page and go create. Oh, hey, look, we just created. Hey, why not? Let's just use the word create. Let's make it simple since this took over your day. Oh, another one popped off. 
And believe we're, uh, we're being inspirational. Let's just stick with one. Alright. Super small here. I want to get a little tiny brush. Dip it in the black that we have left here. Just a little bit. Just tiny. And do the edges. I want some of it to actually come to the front. This will make this word pop, especially since it's so small. shall we create? I'm thinking right down here. Yeah. Okay. One last time with the medium. There. There you have it. I'll take some pictures. They seem to come out a little less reflective. And there we go. First tile. All done. So, yeah, I think we're going to do different tiles on just different techniques that I haven't tried or I'm not comfortable with. And uh, we've got 48 of them, so 47 more to go. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll try to get one of these out, you know, every few days. Alright? One more thing. I have this awesome feather charm that I'm going to put on this. I've got jump rings here that I made. Uh. Ooh, beads. We'll have to do this at some point show you all these but right now got this little jump ring here let's see probably want to hang the feather this way so it dangles I'm gonna go ahead and close this jump ring Because for now, I don't think I'll put anything else on here. I can always open it again and put more on here. So, feather's gonna hang. And of course, I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of the red or the brassy here. Just enough to kind of make it match here. And let's do the blue. Get that thing patinaed up a little bit. Same with the ring itself. Like things drip down over the years. And most of the ring here. I'm gonna make sure it looks a little grubbier than it does. And there we go. Oh, hey. I'm washing my paintbrush off. Right. We are done. Take pictures and that's it.